What's the difference between extended fasting and short-term fasting? Which one is healthier? In this video, we're going to talk about a new study that compared the effects of long-term fasting and short-term fasting on insulin resistance. Do it. So the title of the study is Prolonged Fasting Outperforms Short-Term Fasting in Terms of Glucose Tolerance and Insulin Release. So that's the spoiler. <laughs> the prolonged fasting did uh, better in terms of maintaining glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity. The catch is though that this prolonged fasting is six days of fasting and uh, the short-term fasting is only two days of fasting which I think most people would actually still consider two-day fasting also a form of extended fasting and short-term fasting would something be like you know within 24 hours like fasting for 16 hours or eight hours but you know regardless this study compared the uh, fasting between of uh, two days and uh, six days so they took healthy individuals healthy males and uh, yeah they just uh, made them fast for either two days or six days and they compared things like uh, rectal temperature ketone production catecholamine concentrations glucose tolerance and insulin release in response to an oral glucose tolerance test so the oral glucose tolerance test is that you know you drink like 100 grams of glucose or something like that and then they measure your insulin response and the glucose response if you have like a huge massive spike and it stays elevated for a long time uh, which uh, generally is uh, referred to as the uh, glucose area under the curve AOC then uh, that's you know indicative of some uh, bad let's say glucose tolerance and uh, some aspects of insulin resistance if you have like a worse score and you're very high you know the uh, insulin response or glucose response to this uh, glucose tolerance test then that is a sign of of some aspects of insulin resistance and one of the reasons why these individual these uh, researchers conducted this study was to actually look at um, you know whether or not this extended fasting would uh, induce some aspects of insulin resistance because it is true there are multiple studies already previously having shown that prolonged periods of fasting can create the short-term uh, insulin resistance or, you know, it's much rather that these uh, longer fasting periods will make your glucose spike a lot higher than normally if you do the oral glucose tolerance test, which isn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have insulin resistance. It's just that if you come from a, like a longer fast, then your body is producing ketones. It's not that used to burning glucose as well. And as a result of that, you lose some of that insulin sensitivity and you score worse on the oral glucose tolerance test. But when you resume to a normal way of eating, then, uh, you know, it goes back to normal. So it's a short term insulin resistance, more like physiological insulin resistance that is actually also been found to happen if you're in ketosis. So like long term ketosis also mimics this uh, insulin resistance by making your body less able to tolerate that uh, oral glucose tolerance test. Uh, but, you know, again, if you re return to a normal way of eating, then it goes back to normal. So it's not like uh, necessarily pathological. And uh, it's just that in the short term, it's not recommended to like break your fast with like large amounts of carbohydrates. And like the, with the oral glucose tolerance test, doing that with like 100 grams of carbs after having fasted for like, you know, six days is definitely, I don't think that is very reasonable. Um, and it's not like a smart thing to do, you know, even to prove a point, there's no like reason uh, to do it. And much rather you would just, you know, return to like, you break a fast with like some normal meals and eat some actual food and then maybe eat some carbohydrates later. That's kind of more, you know, in the real world, that's how you would do it. And um, in the real world, you would also avoid this uh, insulin resistance that would occur in the short term. But regardless, the study found that both fasting trials, the six and uh, the two day fasting increased the glucose area under the curve. Uh, but the AUC remained higher than the baseline value after participants returned to their usual diet in the two day fast group. Neither fasting had an immediate effect on the insulin AUC although it increased after return to their usual diet in the six-day fast group. These data suggest that the two-day fast elicited residual impaired glucose tolerance, which may be linked to greater perceived stress during short-term fasting, as shown by the epinephrine or adrenaline response and change in core temperature. By contrast, prolonged fasting seemed to evoke an adaptive residual mechanism that is related to improved insulin release and maintained glucose tolerance so that is interesting that the six-day fast actually in the short term did you know better with the AUC score and uh, also maintained better insulin sensitivity compared to the two-day fast and some of the 
like hypothesized these uh, researchers say is that it could be because of the you know two-day fast is stressful it does like make your body somewhat insulin resistant in the short term the same applies to the six day fast but after the six day fast or by the time you have fasted for six days then your body has kind of somewhat gotten used to uh, that stressor and it doesn't cause that much um, let's say insulin resistance uh, as well or uh, you at least you like just improve the um, insensitivity or you just burn through the glucose much faster after a six day fast if you do take the oral glucose tolerance test the two-day fast had a residual negative effect on glucose tolerance, e.g. higher glucose area under the curve, so higher blood sugar levels pretty much for longer. After the recovery period following the six-day fast, glucose tolerance returned to the baseline level, which suggests that the prolonged fast evoked an adaptive mechanism, such as greater insulin release, as shown by the higher insulin AUC. So, uh, yeah, the uh, six-day fast uh, made you, like, release more insulin, pretty much, uh, whereas the two-day fast uh, resulted in a longer or higher glucose levels and probably that's you know the reason why your glucose levels generally stay elevated for longer is because of insulin resistance and not producing that insulin or not letting the insulin to unlock the cells to let the glucose into the cells so um, whereas the six-day fast uh, actually enabled that to happen so there you have it this is a very short uh, summary of this study that looked at the difference between two-day fast and a six-day fast six-day fast was better for the um, you know, insulin sensitivity and uh, insulin resistance aspects. Although, you know, in the bo case, of, case of both of them, this insulin resistance will resume to normal after you return to a normal way of eating. And, you know, these individuals were healthy as well. So for them, it's not an issue for for their insulin sensitivity to normalize after, after a few days or after a few meals even. What the takeaway for you could be that, yeah, if you do longer extended fasting, then don't break it with an oral glucose tolerance test or don't eat like 100 grams of carbs or something like that immediately. You want to slowly reintroduce the carbohydrates and foods that would uh, reestablish your insulin sensitivity and for First of all, or you know, after all, you don't really even, even need to fast for maybe two or six days. We don't know. We don't necessarily have evidence that this is exactly how you how long you need to fast to see health benefits. Like there have been many studies that showing already fasting within 16 hours improves health, improves insulin sensitivity, and without causing any of these negative side effects of insulin resistance. So there's no real evidence to suggest that you need to fast two or six days to see improvements in insulin sensitivity, and you can already see that within. A 16 hours of fasting and I think personally you know over the long term it's much more sustainable and uh, potentially causes fewer negative side effects if you do want to optimize intermittent fasting and even other types of fasting then check out my intermittent fasting uh, video course but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click the like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. stay optimized stay empowered